Here, I know how to get them. Why you get the House members in here, too? The appointed time having come and gone, we're, let's uh, ask our state senators and our state representatives to join us. Uh, today's Senate Majority Policy Committee hearing is the second of our hearings this year designed to help us learn more about the conduct of the 2020 elections in Pennsylvania. Uh, today's hearing was requested by Senator Doug Mastriano, who in addition to serving the 264,000 residents of the 33rd District in Adams, Cumberland, Franklin, and York Counties, also serves as the chair of the Senate's Intergovernmental Operations Committee. As Dr. Mastriano can attest, uh, this subject is an excellent example, not of the normal layer cake model of intergovernmental operations, but of the marble cake model. We have examples of local government, county government, state government, and federal government, all very much involved in the design and conduct of an election. And as we've seen, not always in a logical, rational, or understandable model. I have frequently reminded the students in the college classes which I have taught, as well as more recently our own governor, that senators and representatives and governors are not kings, we're not judges, we're not dictators. We are agents of public opinion, elected by the people for a fixed term as lawmakers to provide oversight on behalf of the public over our government agencies and, of course, as lawmakers. We're here today because we have all been receiving massive numbers of phone calls and emails and personal comments when we're out walking our dogs in our neighborhoods about the conduct of this election. My office has received a record number of contacts, over 25,000 phone calls and emails as of yesterday. We all know that Pennsylvania's Secretary of the Commonwealth changed the guidance to election officials the day before the November 3rd election, which added a completely new element of doubt to our process, issues that should have been resolved by the legislature as recommended by Supreme Court Max, Justice Max Baer, were instead carried out by the Secretary without the approval of the Senator of the House. This committee held a similar event in January of 2020 on recent changes to our state's election laws. At that time, the Secretary of the Commonwealth assured us that this process would be carried out smoothly. The large number of complaints which we have received from our constituents tells us a very different story. That's why we're here today, again, as agents of public opinion. Senator Mastriano and his staff have assembled a number of witnesses who will share their experiences with us regarding the conduct of this year's election. Uh, we look forward to listening to that testimony. But before we turn there, I want to introduce uh, my good friend, our caucus administrator, and as of December 1st, our incoming majority leader, uh, congratulations to Kim Ward. Thank you for joining us. Uh, please, Kim, your, your statement. Thank you, Senator Argel. And thank you, Senator Mastriano, for inviting me to participate in what I think is very, very important to the people of Pennsylvania. As Senator Argel has said, we have been inundated with calls and emails and messages in our social media. People are not feeling good nor confident about the process and the results because of that process. The president and his team deserve, this is a president of the United States, not the president of your middle school school board. So we need to uh, make sure that they have the room that they need to explore every avenue. So when this is over, we know that the process, what worked in it, what didn't work in it, and what we need to do to fix it and what we may need to do to address it. This has been very, very uh, exhausting and hard on so many in Pennsylvania. And uh, I look forward to listening to what the testifiers and Mr. Giuliani have to say to us today. So thank you very much again, and um, thank you. Thank you, Master, Mr. Senator Mastriano. <laughs> thank you, Kim. Senator Mastriano, please. Thank you, Senator Argyle and Senator Ward. Thank you for being here and supporting this here. And welcome, everybody, to this most, most historic occasion and this most historic town. And what happened here in 1863, I think today we're going to see a turning of the tide because we have not really heard the truth of the arguments made on the other side on what happened. And when we're dealing with a government and leadership in Harrisburg 
and wants to close their ears to what's happened during this election, and sadly, many in the media that are complicit and want to write off what happened. So for me, on this battlefield and remembering what happened 157 years ago, especially 157 years ago last week, where Abraham Lincoln gave his most famous address, and I think his final sentence captures why we're here today. He said that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. And everything is at stake in what happened during this election cycle. Everything. The republic is at stake. This is no game for us. And for any veteran in this room here who wore the uniform, such as Brigadier General Scott Perry, thank you for being here, sir. Um, uh, put their lives on the line here fighting for a country and to see that there is a group in this state and country willing to throw away our valuable and precious freedoms here for power. You know, for me... There we go. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Mayor, it's going to be a fantastic hearing today. Despite pleas from our citizens, the governor refuses to even consider that there is any shenanigans in the elections here in our state, a state of 13 million people, and he wants to discount because his guy won that nothing bad happened, and that's just unacceptable. If there's any hint of fraud out there, we need to investigate. Any governor serving the people, this commonwealth, would put aside his petty politics would put aside his petty politics and find out the truth if anyone was defrauded. And at this point here, he's unwilling to do that. Let me point out some hard facts here. Uh, we are in Adams County, named after our second president, John Adams, who famously said, facts are stubborn things. Let me lay out several of these inconvenient truths, as Al Gore would have us think. There have been many allegations of uh, voting law violations across the state, and a governor serving the people would have to move heaven and earth to ensure no one was defrauded. But yet he's not moved to action. And even his secretary of state, of course, says that, that there was no shenanigans of great concern. And uh, I'll remind everyone that I was a no vote on, a, on the confirmation of Kathleen Bookvar four times that I interacted with her. I asked her, why are elections in Afghanistan more secure than in Pennsylvania? And she sat there and blinked and couldn't give me a straight answer. That, that, that elections are more safe and secure in a war-torn country, devastated by conflict since 1979. What is going on here? The place where this all started in 1776 and we can't get an election right? You've got to be kidding me here. And so as a result of her inaction, the governor's inaction, refusal to even look into any of the allegations and to discount the, the very essential freedoms of our, our citizens, we are here today to try to find out what the heck happened in the election. You know, and likewise, our attorney general, our senior law enforcement official here, you know, instead of being focused on making sure things are lined up in, the, in kosher, before one vote was counted in Pennsylvania, the day before the election declared Biden the winner. I mean, it's, there's nothing to see here. Could you imagine if the shoe was on the other foot? Would the media be so gracious and merciful and kind if it was a Republican? Absolutely not. And so, Houston, we have a problem here. You know... One of the most troubling things in this whole endeavor here, and it's not just because of the COVID, it's just a lack of transparency and accountability. So we're here to start shedding light on the darkness. And then, of course, we have a Supreme Court that rewrote election law. You know, Act 77 has been painted as a villain. Okay, we could debate that. But the real problem was is when the Pennsylvania Supreme Court decided they're going to write legislation and rewrite our law. And because of that, obviously, Pennsylvania, we got a lot of problems there. And that opened a door to all the shenanigans and abuses and folly that we're dealing with here in, in the state this day. So what's going on here? Thousands of people from across the Commonwealth have reached out to us, tens of thousands, uh, asking and demanding action. They deserve it. And as a result of the inability of our executive branch to do, do their job, we're stepping in here. We're co-equal members, and we're going to do our job. We're looking for transparency and truth. There's going to be no grandstanding here. We're after facts. And we're going to have a good layout here of what happened. And you're going to have to decide, good people of Pennsylvania, on what happened and whether there's a strong case we made or not. You know, the forgotten men and women of our, our great state feel betrayed by their government. And I'm with them. I feel the betrayal as well. So we undertake these proceedings today to find out what happened and then hopefully come up with an approach where it never happens again. And the issues are galore. You're going to hear about poll watchers being denied access, where election software vendors refuse to testify before the General Assembly. What do they got to hide? Do we expect the people to trust their government? And we've got to earn their trust. 
And this is no game. And the very republic very much is at stake. Uh, anyone who loves this country has to put aside their petty partisan politics and allow the light to shine where, where it is. And we're going to find the truth and celebrate it. You know, as a soldier and now as an elected member of the state senate, I'm not going to stand aside. And then neither of the members around me are as well. We're going to fight the good fight for freedom and secure our republic. Too many good men and women have gone before us here, given their lives here, and to cast it aside now for power play is unacceptable and it's not going to happen. Thank you. I'm almost done. We do our great men and women in uniform and those who lay down their lives and gave the last full measure of devotion a great disservice if we stand aside and allow bureaucrats and corrupt politicians to steal their voice and maybe even steal an election. We'll find out. John 8, 3, thank you. John 8, 3, 6, 6 says that if Jesus sets you free, you're free indeed. We're going to walk as free people in Pennsylvania. This is where all started. <laughs> we choose this day to walk as free men and women in honor of the sacrifice, not only of Jesus on Calvary, but also in honor of the sacrifice of brave men and women in uniform who fought for and secured our freedoms. We will be relentless in our pursuit of the transparency of accountability and truth. The time for dithering, politics, and games is over. The time for truth and justice is now. In conclusion, as Benjamin Franklin was leaving Constitutional Hall in 1787, he was approached by Mrs. Powell, and Mrs. Powell ran up to him. We surmised she knew him personally, and she said, Well, Mr. Franklin, what do we have, a monarchy or a republic? And he said, A republic, if you can keep it. This is our time to keep this republic. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Mastrano. We turn now to the uh, introductions of our, our House and Senate members. Uh, let's uh, begin with uh, our, our representatives here at this end of the table. Gentlemen, ladies. Uh, is it on? Yeah, Representative Dave Zimmerman uh, serving the northeast part of Lancaster County. Representative Greg Rothman, the 87th District, Cumberland County. Representative Mike Jones, 93rd District, York County. Representative Paul Schemmel, portions of Franklin County. Representative Rob Kaufman, 89th District, Northern Franklin County. Uh, Representative Stephanie Borowitz from the 76th District. <laughs> um, I'm honored to be here fighting for freedom, so thanks. Hi, Senator Judy Ward from Blair County, representing Blair, parts of Huntington, parts of Huntington, parts of uh, Franklin County, part of uh, Cumberland County, and all of Fulton County. Wow. You've already met Senator Kim Ward. I believe you know Senator Mastriano. There we go. Good afternoon. I'm Senator Mario Scavello from Monroe, Northampton County, and I can see New Jersey from my district. Senator Mike Regan from Cumberland and York County. Good afternoon. State Representative Dan Mal. Welcome to my 91st legislative district. Representative Frank Ryan from Lebanon County, Breakaway Probe. Thank you. We are also uh, joined on Zoom Senator Brooks and Senator Hutchinson from Northwestern Pennsylvania, Senator Yaw from the Williamsport area, Senator Stefano from Southwestern Pennsylvania, Senator Laughlin from Erie, Senator Martin from Lancaster County, Senator Pittman from Indiana County, Senator Pat Brown from the Lehigh Valley. Also, uh, my, my job as chairman is to remind our panelists to keep their microphones muted until it is your turn to speak, and also remind everyone to strictly observe our time limits. Uh, one other reminder 
to our senators and witnesses at the request of our Senate attorneys. Uh, this is a legislative at hearing. Our purpose is to listen to the complaints of our constituents, the oversight of government agencies, and the need for possible legislation. We all need to conduct ourselves accordingly. With that being said, uh, Senator Mastriano, I believe you want to introduce our first witness for 15 minutes. And we will hold to the representative and senators, so you understand, we will hold all of our questions until the conclusion of the sixth panel. I would just simply say, welcome to America's mayor. Thank you, Mayor Giuliani, for being here.